we got some new information for the new Forza Motorsport, including some new details through the Forza Monthly for September. So today I'm going to be taking you through all the details and all the kind of gameplay elements that we saw. So just to quickly start off with what sort of gameplay that we got, we got to see the initial experience, the initial intro to the game, which included Maple Valley in the E-Ray with a practice lap with traffic, then on to Hakoni in the middle of an endurance race, which was multi-class with LMP and GT, and that was in the Cadillac V-Series.R, and then the first race in the Builders' Cup in the Civic Type R, which included all the starter car selections. So there was the Civic Type R, the Subaru STI, or the Ford Mustang GT, and that was done on the Grand Oak Raceway which also included the practice session beforehand, which we've discussed before with the car mastery at play, and then the actual race itself. Now, while I have all that gameplay run in the background, we got some new details about some of the thought process about how they created the tracks. In fact, they shared a bit of a funny story with that, which I'll also share. So to start off with, it's all about collecting cars that matter to you and not collecting cars in general, which in previous Forza games, it's been basically the opposite. And because they've really thought of everything in Forza Motorsport, they like to think from Forza Motorsport 1 all the way up to 7 was about car collecting. And Forza Motorsport is the new era of car progression. They've handpicked the cars, tracks and new mechanics to help ease into the Builder's Cup, no matter your skill level. As for car mastery, it was designed to put a score on something so you know you're improving or not out of 10 and you'll see this in the gameplay where it might give a, a 9 or an 8.7 or even lower from sector to sector a basically a a metric to compare against and car mastery was inspired by the racing term 10 tenths fast as you could possibly be utilizing every inch of the track and being the fastest you can be this was then it became entitled the, the car mastery system. When building the AI, they wanted to unlock your faster self, and they built an AI system that could drive as fast as theoretically possible for all possible combinations of cars, tunes, and upgrades. Bear in mind all the different classes of cars as well. So they're trying to get the player have the fastest but cleanest lap. So with all this AI, they didn't really focus on aggression or blocking or anything like that. In terms of upgrades, they don't just want the player to see the PI number change, but they want to see how it affects the car from driving with that part to the spider graph telling you what it's doing to the car itself. They want the players to learn and develop, even if you're completely new, they want you to have some sort of basic understanding of what everything's doing and therefore you can create a build of a car that you want. They've tried to make all the complex system as easy as possible for everybody to understand. And with all the different options, they want to make a game both accessible and approachable for all players, no matter what their, their knowledge is or their skill is. So you might be completely brand new to something like racing. You might like racing and not really de have delved into tuning, but that's completely accessible. But there's also the more advanced and expert people that know all that stuff. And they will also be able to pick up Forza Motorsport just as easily. So Chris Asaki shared a story about why they've built and rebuilt every single track from scratch. So he wanted everybody in the community to understand how much work actually goes into it. And because they've kind of redone all their tracks, they what they do is they start with the physics. So things like the tire and suspension modeling, all that kind of thing that we've all heard say him say it's built from the ground. So when they put the new physics in, they still had the old tracks in. These weren't all rebuilt. And the cars were bouncing all over the place. It was basically undrivable. They broke their own game, basically. So they had to rebuild every single track because the new physics was picking up geometry and aspects of the old tracks that wouldn't normally be there in, say, Forza Motorsport 7. So they have literally had to rebuild everything and every track, new laser scans, all that kind of stuff for the new Forza Motorsport. Quite interesting to know, is that actually? Talking of tracks, they made a mention about the Nordschleifer. So... Chris Ozaki said they know how important that track is to the community, to racing fans, and they, he said that they focus on the GP circuit for launch because it fits into the Builders Cup and featured multiplayer, which is more shorter sprint race types. And with that shorter sprint type race in mind, that's exactly why they built 
the fictional track of Grand Oak. It's the reason why it was built. For those people that are late to the party, Nudge Lifer will arrive as a free content update in spring 2024 and will be the most accurate Nudge Lifer in the Forza Motorsport game ever with a brand new track scan. And even we can kind of tell where they are in Dylan with that. He said he, he hasn't driven it yet because they've not finished it yet. So they're still working on Nudge Lifer, which is quite interesting to know, but it's definitely something on their mind, obviously, at the moment, and it's in development. He also went on to say that there's going to be some new additional track announcements and plan on continuing introducing more as free updates that's really good to, to hear the fact that they're going to be free updates not dlc or as packs or anything that's really good to hear but not just tracks that's going to be the same applicable to new cars career mode events new online events etc the final piece of details was about wheel support important for me i love a wheel on my sims so this is what was mentioned Forza Motorsport will support various different wheels, including additional displays, LEDs, RPM. He mentioned some of the Moser wheels, some of the Fanatec wheels. There's going to be force feedback improvements, general improvements for wheels. And this is also a really important thing. So they're using what's now called the Direct Input API. So although they have an official list on their website of all the wheels that work, if it's not on that list, there is a chance that it will work, but they're not guaranteeing that it will work. So just bear that in mind. And that is all the details that we got from the September Forza monthly live stream. Of course, the gameplay is running in the background, but there is there's a bit more than this video length as well. Just bear that in mind. So if you do want to see the entire thing in full length, go over to the Forza YouTube channel. And that's going to do it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful and you'd like to see more like this one, make sure you're subscribed. I will keep you all up to date with new Forza Motorsport content and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.